Going, so looks like we're off the air. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Parks Commission, um, and it is five o'clock straight up. Uh, we have a quorum present. We may have another member or two coming in, but we'll make room for them as that happens. Um, I'll begin by asking uh, if anyone uh, from the public is here this afternoon that would like to speak to the commission, and if so, um, please uh, please come forward and tell us your name and tell us what you have to say. Anybody? Everybody's trying to avoid eye contact with me. I guess that means <laughs> nobody nobody's coming up. You're not that intimidating. Okay, well, let's uh, make sure you're free to do so if you want to. Um, all right, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. They're attached to the package, um, and if, any, if everyone has had an opportunity to review them, I'll entertain a motion to accept them or make any changes that are necessary. I think some changes need to be made. I wasn't present, and it shows me present. Ah, okay. We'll make note of that. Anything else? That was the only thing I saw. I'll make a motion to approve the amended minutes. Okay. There's a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That's done. Um, item D is other business. We don't have a long agenda, but we've got some important things to talk about. And I guess number one, D1, discuss and take action on ideas for a memorial at the dog park. Jason, you want to lead us on this discussion? Sure. So good evening, everybody. Um, one of the items that we discussed last go around uh, was, you know, how do we memorialize or how do we commemorate uh, Miss Izzy Drain um, during, you know, during our dog park uh, construction and project. Um, and so what I did was uh, at the request of, of the commission uh, was asked to put together a couple of ideas. Uh, we did have some conversation um, prior to putting this list together with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Train. Uh, one of the things that I will note uh, that is incorrect in the naming of the dog park is uh, what, sh what Izzy's uh, request for the naming of the dog park, dog park was Riverside Bark. Um, so I would, you know, apologize for that. Uh, it's not Bark Park, it was Riverside Bark. Um, but nonetheless, um, we do have some other options up here as well. Um, if we want to stick with that name or if the commission, you know, wants to go that route, um, you know, that can be a recommendation made here or um, any other name. Um, some of these we can incorporate. Um, we can incorporate some. We can incorporate all. We can incorporate none. Uh, really just uh, depends on, you know, what direction the commission would like to move forward with. Well, you sent this out some time ago. Did you get any specific uh, requests from or thoughts back from? I did get a few. Um, I did get a few thoughts from some of the commissioners. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you we know, can kind of go through and, and just kind of take it one at a time. If, if if commission wants to do that and get everyone's thoughts, or if you had some previous feedback and wanted to share that too. I mean, it, it was. Uh, I only got only received feedback from two or three commissioners. Um, it, they were very short uh, for the most part. Some of them had to deal with the naming of the dog park itself. Um, you know, um, I, I, they, they all were very just kind of general in terms. Um, there was one, uh, comment about the naming of the dog park and, um, you know, if we wanted to go that route with, with bark park, uh, and again, Riverside bark was the one that Izzy wanted to go with. And so, uh, I do apologize for that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it we, we want to take these one bullet point at a time we can. Um, it would probably be the, the easiest way to go about it uh, just so we can get feedback from the entire commission. Okay. Well, let's do that. Why don't we, t why don't we start by, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about names of the dog park. Um, you know, I, I think what our, what our role would be would be to suggest a name. I don't think we get, I don't think we have the authority to actually give the name, but I think we have... Right. Um, the ability to suggest a name if the commission, you know, feels like there's um, there's there's something we would all be in agreement on using, um, and you know, it, 
on that score, does anybody have any any particular thoughts about? I, I like Riverside Bark, and I like rivers, I saying Riverside a lot because people have told me before that if if they didn't if they weren't getting on the river, they wouldn't know that there was a river down there. So I think if uh, if we keep telling people Riverside and the name of different things down here, it'll remind them that there's a river that runs through it. I agree. I think it it's a great name for the park, and it has a lot of meaning to it. You know, it being Izzy's idea, I think it's a great way to memorialize her and, you know, continue her legacy um, in the park. So I'm all for it. Um, I am, too. I think that it needs to have the word dog in it, though, as well, so that you can find it. So people that are outside the area, even in the city, so Riverside right. Bark Dog Park, I mean, it's a lot of words, but for SEO and other reasons to be able to find it, I think it needs the word dog in there. And then I would have in smaller case somewhere maybe on the, in, in memory of. Right. And then right beneath it in a different font, smaller font, but in memory of Izzy Drain. Okay. So that the name, but the naming, I agree, it needs to have Riverside in it in some capacity. Okay. Yep, it, could, it could be like Riverside Bark and then Dog Park underneath it and then in memory of Izzy Drain or okay. in honor of or in memorial of. Okay. Make a cool looking plaque type of thing. Right. Might be just have more words. Their thoughts? My only thought is, do we have a deadline to name this park? I know that we haven't started building it yet. And my understanding was, you know, when I first got in commission, uh, there was a foundation that uh, offered to match us dollar per dollar. I, I can't recall the name of the foundation <clears throat> or the individual that uh, brought up the uh, first idea to build this dog park mm -hmm. back about, what, five, six years ago? Actually, it was in 2016. It okay. was the Marsha Shanklin Foundation that uh, was willing to donate $150,000 for naming rights for the park. And actually that was the same time that uh, the Victoria Parks Coalition was uh, founded. The city was willing to move forward with that, but they didn't, they wanted the parks commissioners to raise funds for the dog park. Right. And we said, okay, give us a bank account. And they said, er, get your own. So Lee <laughs> cut us a nonprofit to fund that dog park <clears throat> in 2016. And then from there, it uh, was kind of put on hold until we did the next 10-year plan. Gotcha. And um, so, and at that time, too, the commissioners with the Victoria Parks Coalition was willing to still raise money for that, but the city said that they would be willing to pay for that, and that was about in 2018. Okay. So we stopped there and sought other projects. Gotcha. So, Jason, what is, um, what is the SAF state? I mean, you guys are naming things, and you guys are so intricately involved in every single bit of, you know, parks and programming, what works for you guys? <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, we haven't really got into that far of conversations about the naming rights of it. It's been more of, you know, what amenities and, and you know, the actual functionality of, of the park itself. Um, you know, I, I, I would just I'd recommend, you know, whatever, whatever y'all's recommendation is. I mean, Riverside Dog Park, Riverside Bark, um, to me, I, I agree. I, I think just me personally, I think Riverside being in the name somewhere is going to be beneficial for many of the reasons that you've already stated. Um, but quite honestly, I mean, we haven't gone into the, those details of it. Again, it's just more of the functionality of the dog park itself and the maintenance aspect of it. Well, is there a consensus then, do you think, among us that um, – Riverside Bark, Dog Park, in memory of or with some some memorial recognition for Izzy would be a name that, that the commission feels like would be appropriate? Well, are we talking about a name and then in memory of? I think that's a whole different um, subject according to the list that we have here for, for options. So if we're just looking at doing a name, well, Jason talked about, you know, doing pavers and then the, the, the wall of pavers for the memory portion of it. And I was interested to know is, has uh, the city reached out to the Marsha Shanklin Foundation anymore to see if they're still interested in the dog park? I know they've been funding splash pads recently, but I don't um, know. Not specifically <clears throat> with this project. Uh, like you mentioned, I mean, there are still some projects that we are waiting to accomplish and to finish up uh, from the Shanklin Foundation. And so just in previous conversations, um, I know that's that's an area that they want us to they want us to fun focus on, you know, is getting re getting the projects that are already uh, have funding allocated towards uh, completed first. Um, but we haven't picked up that conversation. The foundation yet. does. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, 
Ms. Kitchen, I've got an idea, you know, like, for example, I, I know I've been involved in a lot of organizations, and like, for example, uh, the Boys Club, we have a, a room that was named after our organization because we donated so much money. Mm -hmm. Is it possible, since she was trying to do some uh, apparatuses for the dogs, can we have that section just named after her, like, for example, this is the uh, Liz, uh, section or, or room or right. apparatuses? Yeah, I mean, we can go. We can go any route. Um, you know, there, it could be as simple as putting up another smaller memorial or some kind of a plaque. You know, that that would show. You know, this is, uh, for instance, you know, the the agility. You know, the drain agility course or something along those lines. Um, we can definitely, you know, tailor it to whatever the recommendation is uh, from commission. Have yeah. you shared with the commission what you shared with me about the pavers going up opposed to like the. The paver idea? I, yes, I, I tried to try to mention that in here, but um, I, I don't know if it came across that way. I, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to, <laughs> to explain it. If uh, And it's probably difficult for me to explain right now visually with just my hands, but um, we, we have a basically a four-sided column that's there right now, a very tall column. And there were some uh, comments and some suggestions that uh, we use those brick pavers um, to surround that that brick column, if you will, and go vertical and basically stack the bricks up that way um, versus horizontally or just laying down on the ground. Um, you know, it definitely would cut uh, cut back on maintenance as, as far as we're concerned. Um, and then, of course, with the remaining, you know, portion of the pole, uh, the Girl Scouts would like to paint or, or have some kind of memorial um, on the uh, on the tower itself. And that could be the memorial aspect of the park. Correct, yes. Right, yes. For Izzy. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I think I it's think, a great idea. I like that. Yeah, I think anything you can do to get away from the pavers actually being individual pavers on the ground, just because we know, you know, Victoria and Riverside, that whole area, it, it shifts a lot. So, like, you look at the yeah. pavers in the Children's Park, and they don't look good anymore. Like, it, they're broken, and, you know, there's stuff growing up through them. I, I just don't feel like it's a very good look long term. Like, it looks great when you put it in, and then five years later, it's all, eh. So yeah. anything we can do to get those pavers off the ground and put them on, like you mentioned, the butter blocks, or go, I think, you know, going around a column, stuff like that. Um, it's a lot less maintenance, and it's going to hold up a whole lot better, I think. Yeah, it would look nicer. Know, agree. I agree. In the long term. I think we all might agree on that one. <laughs> awesome. Let's, let's go back and see if we can get a, let's go back and see if we can get a consensus just on the name, all right? Um, what, what about, are, are we good with Riverside Bark Dog Park? Yes. 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 Sounds like everybody, I mean, it doesn't have to be everybody. I'm just trying to get a sense for. It's a mouthful. You know. I like Riverside Bark, but I can understand, like, if we're, it's a Google title, we need yeah. to have dog in it. So I, I see where you're coming from, but I don't have an objection to it. And I like how you kind of stated it, Riverside Bark and then. Dog you know, Park. Dog Park underneath it for, like you said, SEO for search reasons, but like the, <laughs> the big title <laughs> sign on it could just be Riverside Bark. Yeah, that know? sounds cool to me, too. Yeah. And we, yeah, we can, to, to keep the sign, and this is kind of getting into the weeds of it, but it doesn't necessarily, if there's other areas that we want to incorporate in the memorialization of Izzy, um, it doesn't necessarily have to say in memory of, right? It could just say Riverside Bark, Dog Park, and then other pieces of the project um, would have those touches of, you know, Izzy's memorial. memorial. Yeah, just, just, just I thought. think we're all in agreement, though, that we want to definitely make sure that Izzy does not get left out. I mean, right. somewhere, or somehow, right. yeah. it's going to be in memory of whether it's the pole or it's the butter block or it's a separate plaque, you know, inspired by in memory of somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have a conceptual drawing other than the sketch that you provided before? Like, you know, when y'all present playgrounds, we have a 3D model spinning around. <laughs> Um, I don't have anything as robust as that, um, but I can definitely ask our consultant to see if I can have something a little bit better for you uh, for next time. The fly through, walk through, or something. Yeah, we he can he can come up with at least a basic you know rendering, if you will, um, and and um, I can definitely share that with you. I'll, I'll touch base with him uh, tomorrow morning. Were you able to work in a water feature for our South Texas heat? He. Um, he was looking at the water feature. I, I think right now what it's going to do is come down to the costs um, associated with it. Uh, but it, we are we are looking at that. Uh, he has finished up majority of the design development of the park, but uh, he does. 
I did talk with him about the water feature and asked him to please incorporate that where possible and where it wouldn't be as, you know, an issue in regards to funding. You know, there was something else that I had concerns about. I have two dogs under 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. They eat twice a day. I have a medium-sized yard. Well, small yard. I do a lot of cleanup after mm -hmm. them. And um, I know irrigation was taken out of the of the planning mm -hmm. for funding or for just for cost to save money. Sure. But I would highly consider or ask you to consider <coughs> is putting that back in because it if you have a high traffic area and you have lots of a mess to clean up, mm -hmm. it might get to be an unsanitary uh, issue. And I know okay. most of us have said we all been to dog parks and we didn't see any irrigation there. Uh, most of the dog parks I've been to are like no traffic at all, like they're deserted, no one's there. Um, so irrigation wouldn't be a problem. But right. if we have high traffic like Riverside does, mm -hmm. it might get to be a, an issue. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely, um, we're still so early into those construction documents too that it's it's not an issue for me just to kind of throw them another, you know, um, bone or two, no pun intended, um, and see what see what all, you know, kind of cost adjustments they can come up with and at least just give us an idea of what it would cost. And then that way, um, when we do happen to go and bid out the project, we can always, you know, use that as an alternate uh, if we wanted to as well. So the contractor would, you know, in essence, put in that price and we'd be able to pick or choose whether or not we wanted to include it. Might be a good feature. Okay, absolutely. I will, uh, I'll definitely mention that to him tomorrow as well. Well, to put a collar on it, why don't we have a motion for <laughs> the name of the dog park? Anyone want to make that motion? I'll make a motion to recommend to City Council that we name the park Riverside Bark. Dog Park. Dog Park. Okay. I'll second <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We can, we can, at, least, uh, we can at least do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are we, do we want to talk about the paw prints? Um, yeah. Mike was talking about um, something about the paw print idea too, so. Oh, the, um, sorry, um, thought there was going to be conversation. No, know y'all, y'all were all staring at me, sorry. No, we're, yeah. um, so no, so the paw prints um, was something that our consultant came up with that he mentioned um, through, a, um, I think, either just research or another project that he was working on. Um, but it's really just incorporating dog paw prints into the um, the entryway into the park itself. And you know, we can do that um, just you know either connecting with the Girl Scout troop and seeing if they're able to bring down some some of their dogs. Uh, we can do a shout out you know um, for the city and see if people are interested to come out and um, whenever we pour the slabs to be able to put you know paw prints in there. Um, and so it was just another thought that the consultant had um, through our conversation about how we can continue this memorial. Um, and so we just wanted to present that as an option to the commission as well. I didn't realize you were talking about real dog prints. Yes, yes. No, <laughs> like, like real legit paw, paw prints. <laughs> I think that's awesome, and opening it to the city would be cool, and you could charge for that too, just so you could have your dog, paw, you know, paw print right. in there. So that'd be cool. I like it. So is it one paw per dog, or? <laughs> uh, we'd have to talk about the details on that one. I'm not sure yet. Um, so this would be in the concrete leading up into the walkway yes. uh, into the dog park. Yes, and, and I want to be very clear, not all the concrete. It would, it would just be the main area of the entryway, um, and we can always – have that conversation, you know, after I talk with the consultant, I can bring him down for a meeting if we need to, um, to even talk about the project. But uh, the idea, the original idea was just the entryway. Yes, sir. And these would probably be, not everybody come to wet cement situation. It would probably be like an individual paver that you print and put into the cement, possibly. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that would how, work yet, but work? I, I thought the concept was a really great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. We, those are the those are the logistics that we'd have to work out with the with the consultant as well, um, even with the contractor. Just knowing when they're going to pour the concrete um, and how all that would work. They might be able to do like a, a plaster bust. You know, you just press yeah. it in there and then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you seen by the pump house on the sidewalk over there? There's paw prints. Have you mm -hmm. seen that? Yes, that's cool. I like it. I'm not, I haven't seen it. Where is that? So when you're going to go to the kayak dock, there's oh. little paw prints on okay. the concrete there on the sidewalk. Okay. All right. Something crawled on it. <laughs> but like a natural occurrence? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, though. <laughs> a 
natural occurrence. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so um, kind of sounds like Paul Prince would be, everybody would be kind of in favor for that. I mean, as long as logistically it's not going to be crazy expensive and they think if, if they've done it before and they think they can do it again, like default to them to logistics. But if it's doable, I think it's a good idea. Okay. So it's just a print without a name, just a print. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Um, the brick pavers, uh, yeah, I, yeah, we just talked about that one, so I, I don't know if you have any further think, questions on that one. I think everyone was kind of in agreement that they need to be vertical as opposed to uh, horizontal. I, I, so I think okay. on that point, I think the, there's a consensus from the commission on that. Okay, perfect. Um, the large butter blocks, um, this, quite honestly, this was just something that I've seen before. I would have to touch base with a consultant just to, just to get an idea. Um, I wouldn't assume that it would be that much. Um, but I've seen the large butter blocks, the butter blocks, just as a reminder, those huge limestone cutouts that we were talking about last time. Um, but I've seen those stamped before. Um, and I didn't know if that would be something that we could that we could do here. Um, I don't, again, I don't know what the cost is associated with it and all that stuff, but um, just another option. Well, I, I think, like, like, like you said, um, the, um, um, it seems like the commission is in favor of making sure that Izzy is not lost in all this in some fashion. And maybe, you know, I don't want to be too prescriptive, and maybe the thing is to let somebody who's really got an aesthetic <laughs> and, and is going to be looking at the overall design to kind of come back and say, would this would be the best place to, you know, to, to make that, to, you know, to put that, and maybe it's on the butter blocks, maybe it's on the sign. I don't know where it goes, but okay. maybe if we if we just let that person know that the consensus of the commission is that we don't want that to be lost, and that we want uh, we want Izzy to be remembered in in some you know special prominent fashion, then is that is that are we are we talking enough? about the brick pavers and the butter blocks in conjunction, or we, we're going to leave it up to somebody who's actually working with the whole overall? Project. That's what my thought would be. Leave it to someone who is really going to deal with the aesthetics of the whole overall thing, and okay. um, and and, and give them the easy. guidance that we don't want her to be forgotten. Well, so. and I think incorporating the fact that she and her family and the Girl Scouts have already sold. Yeah, that's my next uh, question. I think, you know, a decent amount of, and I want to say it was brick pavers that they, they sold. Correct. So, There's some experts in the audience yeah. back here that can yeah, probably you answer that us? question. <laughs> you, wanna, you want me to? Or? Go for it. um, it's 150 of the clay bricks is what we have sold so okay. far. We haven't actually purchased the brick item, but we know from the person that's going to do the engraving that it must be a clay brick. So... We could have option on color and stuff like that, but okay. So what what, have, so what has been sold to the people that actually purchased these? Um, they got to put um, in memory of and their pet's name on okay. the brick, and we're having them engraved. Okay. Um, with that information on there. Okay. Like with dates. Yeah, like they can put. Anything? They had the option um, of putting the dates that the dot you know from 2000 to 2010, or and then also they had the option of putting the name. Um, they could put a first name and a last name if they wanted to. Um, and they could put the words in memory of, or they can just put that on its own. Like two or three lines It was text. three line option. <coughs> and so, How big are the pavers? Um, just like your standard brick. Just, 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 12 just by a standard 12, brick. Um, like, like, a, a brick. Like, a, like a brick. Six you know? by three-ish. Okay. Just a standard brick. So was, was y'all's thought to... Uh, was this like a fundraising thing for the Girl Scouts, uh, or was this money supposed to go back to the dog park? Or this what did... was Izzy's fundraiser that she had approved to go back to the dog park. So what we were going to do with this, which we've got other donations outside of that, was to purchase the um, agility equipment. And I've given him copies of so far where we're at with what we are looking to purchase to go inside that, the agility equipment. So all of the funds outside of the cost of the bricks and the engraving was going to go back into mm -hmm. purchasing agility equipment. Yes. Uh, for the park. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how many bricks can we have on our memorial column that's going up? Do, how many? How much more space do we have, Jason? Um, I would 
I, I would have to go out there and get some run some numbers, but I, I would I would be safe to say. I mean, there's probably another 150 that could easily go. It just depends on how high we want to get, um, because that that column is maybe 15, 20 feet. I mean, it's really tall, 15 feet or so. So it's a, it, we have a lot of space. Um, so that 150, uh, I could I would say we could easily double that. What's the column made out of? Uh, I believe it's concrete. Would we be able to engrave just directly onto that concrete? Potentially. I, I, we, we'd have to do a little bit of research, but it, potentially. Well, design-wise, I mean, that, that, that uh, you might want that to go up to, you know, a, a certain height. I don't know that you'd want it way over people's heads necessarily, but... But um, if if we had more bricks than we than we had room to just go around the the column, I mean there may be other elements of the of the design that those could be incorporated in, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe seating or or mm -hmm. yeah. Or I'm not the greatest designer, but my my <coughs> thought on just looking at it is if we did the butter blocks kind of in a semicircle or something around the big column, you could put bricks going up the column or engrave directly on the column, and then if you run out of room there, you could engrave on on the butter block themselves. Because um, yeah, I've seen that before. The Woody Museum in San Antonio, they did that for kind of like their founders were basically like, depending on the size of the donation, you could have a small engraving on the butter block or you could have a big engraving on there. And then you, you cut out some cost too because you're, instead of paying for the brick and the engraving, you're just paying for, you know, the engraving right. it's, itself. I don't, I don't know if that's an option, but. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely, we can definitely have our consultant look at it. Um, there was an area right uh, as soon as you walk into both sides, uh, they had a seating area, and where that where that large pole is at, there's it, the seating area is very close in proximity. So um, we can definitely definitely look at that option. We be able to put like a plaque or anything with like a picture of Izzy, like I'm thinking like a, a bronze plaque or something like that, with like a picture of her and her dog, and then like <coughs> maybe the story of how it started on that pillar as well. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, options are endless. So, um, yeah, absolutely, we can we can do that. Well, again, at the risk of, of trying to design by committee, which is probably <laughs> a terrible idea. Um, I, the, the the ideas that seem to come out of that, though, are the are the you know the vertical use of the right. of the pavers that the Girl Scouts are selling, um, and if uh, you know those those incorporated in some way where people can you know where they're. People can see them and enjoy them and, and show their kids that's your, you know, that's our, that was our dog before we had you or whatever you, <laughs> whatever you tell them. Um, but, um, I mean, I think those, I think going beyond that in terms of, you know, again, being too prescriptive about what, you know, what to go and do, mm -hmm. um, I think if we give a good indication that, the, that the, uh, the commission feels strongly about kind of those elements being present, and being used in that way, is that fair to say? Is that, okay, does it? Yep. Okay. Okay, absolutely. Well, and, then uh, we, we should quit trying to design it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what I can do is I'll, I'll, touch, uh, I'll touch base with Brent Luck, our uh, consultant, and see you know what kind of drawings he could mock up for us and, and present that to you at the next meeting. And, and do, you know we can go from everything from a basic concept um, to what that would look like to um, signage. Um, yeah, we could offer we things. could offer some input on something like that. That'd be good. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll touch base with them tomorrow and see what we can do. Is the Mayberry Perfect. pole gonna go away? Is the what? The Mayberry pole that's oh, there. Oh no no, that's the one that we we would be. Oh, you're building around there that. There would be building around that. Yes. What, what was it? It was a Mayberry pole. The Maypole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It had like swings that you run and you <coughs> oh, swing that so that's okay that's the yeah. fun 70s and 80s toys <laughs> where you get hurt one of those one of those things that, that when back when you could get stitches and you didn't get sued so it was, keep on trucking <laughs> all right okay all right well good thank all you all right well let's uh let's move on to item d2 uh jason you're going to introduce some <clears throat> new staff yes so um 
go ahead and come on up. <laughs> um, so, you know, as, um, as you may recall, uh, we did some reorganization within the department. And um, so we converted basically two positions into two different positions. Um, one that is now a uh, parks and recreation superintendent and another one that is a sports tourism manager. And um, we were lucky enough to find a great sports tourism manager, uh, Michelle Myers, and we want to introduce you to her. So, Michelle. Good evening, Commission. How are you guys? Good evening. We're good. Thank you. Uh, Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. So uh, just a little bit about what I'm doing and what my efforts are on all of this is I am taking Victoria and I am putting it in a position to aggressively attack the sports tourism market for the facilities that we have and doing that by branding, by marketing, by figuring out what are all the pieces that make up Victoria that kind of tell our story so that when I'm asked, hey, where are you located? What do you guys do? What do you have? I have a solid answer that, that really like truly gives a representation of our area. So it's been a whole month. I'm a whole month into it. Um, and we're making great progress. We went to a conference last week and there was a lot of education that was offered and a lot of ideas that are flowing today that I haven't had time to get all, all of it out on paper today. Um, but that's that's kind of the dynamics of, of what I'm doing at this point. Does anybody have any questions? Well, that's Comments great. What, are, so, how does how does I mean, like I said, a month into it, how do how do we stack up competitively, and who are our who are our biggest competitors for that type of that type of uh, you know that type of use or whatever. Uh, sure. So we actually have a database that we can put our facilities into and they will rank our facilities for us and then kind of give us a general ranking as to where we stand in the U.S., where we stand in the Southwest, that type of thing. I got all that information uploaded. We had some platinum facilities. We had some, like Riverside was a platinum. We had two or three golds. We had a silver. Overall in the Southwest region, we are ranked number 11 for that particular index and everyone that uses that. Um, when we went to the conference, of course, we're seeing, you know, your big, huge complexes and big, huge facilities and things that you can dream about, you know, like, yes, one day we can have all of this. Um, but in our smaller markets, we have really great facilities that we can compare to. And we actually met three or four different organizations that were like, we've been trying to get to Victoria. We just haven't had a contact. We didn't know where to go. We didn't know. And they were really excited about the possibility of bringing their sports to our area. Yeah. So what do you think our biggest opportunity in the sports tourism is that we should be going after that we're not right now? Deciding who we are and deciding where we fit into it. Are, are, do we want to just tackle one area? Do we want to try to grab every piece of the pie? What is it that, that just makes us, what do we want to do to stand out? And what do we have to highlight to do that? So, and that, that's kind of where I'm at still kind of trying to figure out what that balance is. What's your primary sports venue or sports? Riverside Golf Course is fantastic, and it has drawn a lot of attention even just recently. <coughs> um, our youth sports complex, um, I had made a brochure that went with us, and when we flipped open to that page, everyone was like, man, these, this is great. This is a great facility. So definitely those two were, were the highlights of, of what we could talk about while we were there. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a big push for, like, Riverside. Like, everything needs to come to Riverside right How now. How about Disc Golf? Have they informed you about our awesome courses that yes. we have here? Yes, and I met with um, Tyler and with Wallace last week, and we had a long conversation about, about those as well. So Good, good. I know there's some things that they're talking about with that. You know, we need five 18-hole courses to host nationals, and um, we've got three right now and possibly another one coming on the way, but we still need one more. And we tried to get in front of the disc golf people, and they were always busy. So I know that's got to be a growing sport that we definitely want to make sure that we, we put our foot into that market. Definitely. Thanks, ma'am. Anything else? Oh, rodeo. Is rodeo on your radar? Any? It's been... Coming to me a lot. <laughs> um, yes and no. I know, like, the arena that we have right now, the ceiling height is an issue as far as bringing in something big. But I have not had a chance to look further into what's actually needed at a facility. And the flooring. Supposedly there's some issue with the dirt isn't up to par for horses. And I can add that into my feasibility <laughs> study on what all is needed for that. Yes, ma'am. we got to have rodeo dirt. 
<laughs> it's got to be rodeo dirt. I don't That's know. what it but is. <laughs> watching monster trucks at whatever it was, the Monster Jam, whatever launch inside of that was like nail biting because they're like that far from the ceiling. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering why the ceiling would have an issue. I haven't, I haven't oh, heard yeah. any issues it about was, the ceiling. Um. And I know just from even where I am, I live in Refurio. You guys all know that I'm from Refurio. Um, we have a rodeo arena that's built there. Specifically, it was built for, you know, all these different things. And even now, companies are coming in. I think it's a liability issue that they're saying your, your beam heights as to what the beam heights are. I don't think a bull would ever throw somebody that high. But apparently there's, it's like, you know, if, if it's happened once, it's got to be talked about, so. I know the county has great interest also in a rodeo arena or even something for barrel riding. Okay. So um, Commissioner Burns will be a great contact for you. He's very knowledgeable in those areas. Great. I'll reach out to him. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, guys, it was great to... Oh, Michelle, thank yes. you very much. We look forward to look forward to your to your work and, and, uh, and getting, <coughs> having, getting you to put us on the map. Mm -hmm. That's so. my job. That's what I'm here to do. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Also, there's interest in the skateboard park, just so. <laughs> All right, Jason. Wanna... All right. Um, so yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so, oh, I did switch this up. So if you're wondering why it looks a little different, I, I was probably blinding you from the yellow. Um, I was getting blinded from the yellow the last couple of meetings, and so I changed the background. So just, just a heads up on that one. Um, so everything's still the same. We are we are trying to mesh a little bit of the two uh, divisions together. So parks and recreation, we'll chat about. Kimberly will take the lead on that. Uh, and then we'll uh, we change, we switched up a little bit on the golf course. So I'll, I'll talk with you about that as we get into it. And then we'll go over the sports tourism uh, efforts that Michelle is leading, and, and as well as the uh, updates on the department projects. Um, so without further ado, uh, Kimberly. Good evening. Hello. Um, so. Ooh, sorry. Um, April was a jam-packed month for us. Uh, it was so much great stuff going on. Um, so we continued going strong with adult softball and kickball, um, our toddlers on the trail. We introduced a tax day 5K um, as well. Uh, and then uh, we did our traditional Riverside camp out and movie night where we watched Encanto which was pretty fun. Um, and we started our budget conversations with the city manager's office. Um, and this month we get to celebrate Riverside Stadium's 75th anniversary. And then uh, with parks, we completed uh, pressure washing Hopkins Park. So it is all clean, sparkly, and shiny. And um, as of today, we started on the Victoria Skate Park, um, starting to wash away the graffiti. And by wash, I mean like scrub with caustic chemicals to remove that graffiti. So go team, awesome. because that's not easy. Um, we got to do a lot of community outreach and collaboration, uh, which is really a lot of fun. So we got to work with the CVB and uh, Keep Victoria Beautiful for some Earth Day activities. Um, behind the Hiller House, they installed a birding deck last year. So if you haven't been out, check it out. Uh, there's some really great pictures. It's great for the kiddos and introducing them to birding. Um, so we had a kind of like an unveiling of that on Earth Day. Um, the police department was able to do some training in Riverside Park. We closed down Fox's Bend for two days um, and they got to do some great skills training um, to keep us all safe. Uh, <laughs> Jason and I had the opportunity to go out to Candler Elementary uh, to talk about what we do and why Parks and Recreation is awesome and why all the kids are so super excited and thrilled to now start their new careers when they grow up in Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the pictures. It had nothing to do with the prizes. Nothing to do with the prizes. <laughs> it was, you know. <laughs> uh, we partnered with Glazier's Beer and Beverage again for the Cinco de Mayo Street Dance last week, uh, which was a great mashup with the new guac party that was happening. So, um, Yay for even more collaboration. Um, and we are going to be, uh, so Jason started conversations with UHV. Um, I'm gonna go into a little bit depth on this one. Sure. Um, he started conversations with UHV about um, some kind of internship, getting kids more involved um, in, in like a work, work study program, um, post-education, um, after you turn 18, like what does all that look like? Uh, what could that possibly be? Um, and so we're working with them um, and internally with our HR department to create like a youth internship program um, starting geared towards high school students, uh, which pairs really well with VISD's uh, work 
program, to my understanding, and a couple other things. Um, so be on the lookout at the next commission meeting for more information on that. So we're working on, you know, having some type of internship program with youth. So it should be a ton of fun. Um, hey, more budget meetings with CMO. Um, and then <laughs> we uh, removed a huge tree out of the back of the zoo. It was a gigantic towering tree and we were able to uh, partner with traffic control with some of their equipment uh, to safely remove the tree from the back of the zoo. And then um, some great professional development. Uh, we've continued doing ball field training with our ball field crew, um, teaching them some of the equipment and uh, different ways to approach um, like grooming the infields and things like that uh, to get kind of the optimal grade and anything like that um, at our ball fields. Um, I think we already talked to you about the hurricane and disaster training that we went to. Um, Jason attended the Texas Forest Leadership Institute. And then uh, last week, Michelle and I attended the Sports ETA Facility Summit and Symposium where we, we got to tour, um, let's see, Dickey's Arena, AT&T Stadium, and then where the Rangers play. And we got to see how their storage is because nothing is cooler than seeing how the turf gets rolled up and stored postseason. So then you can turn your stadium into a concert venue. So that's really cool. We got to do that um, and got some great ideas as Michelle was talking about. Um, I can't read that last one. Any uh, other? Uh, Traffic, traffic control, control. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, and then, so with that traffic control one, it's also a professional development opportunity because our crews were able to get some, some tree taking down skills. You would know how to word that better. Sorry, Jason. That works for me. <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to mention to you, uh, Kimberly had mentioned the budget a couple times, um, but this is last, well, this is our current year's budget. So this is our, our current budget that we're in. Uh, but just so you have an idea, the picture on the left-hand side are all the divisions or all the budgets that we end up uh, putting into uh, our software system. Um, so as you can see, I mean, we have, you know, close to, I don't know, I'd say eight to 10 just on a guess. Uh, that we deal with as far as, you know, placing information into uh, each of those accounts. Um, again, this is last year's, this is not uh, this upcoming year's, uh, but what I wanted to do is also list out just, you know, a couple hot topics uh, that we're looking at for this upcoming fiscal year. Um, I had mentioned previously that we definitely want to get around to having this budget conversation with you at the end of our calendar year so we can have more input from you uh, for next year's uh, budget. Uh, but nonetheless, <clears throat> Excuse me. In this upcoming budget year, we are looking at uh, the sidewalk connectivity that was outlined in the master plan. Uh, connectivity uh, being from all of the uh, all of the parks, um, all of the smaller parks, I guess, with the exception of Riverside Park, because that's just a, a beast in itself. Um, but sidewalk connectivity seemed like a low hanging fruit. Um, really, just a lot of just pieces and filling in the gaps, if you will. Um, we're also looking at replacing vehicles that are older than 10 years old uh, in our fleet. Just trying to take that the, a slower approach to it instead of just, you know, getting rid of everything and replacing. Uh, looking at replacing two of our playscapes throughout the park system. Um, <clears throat> for the community center, we would be looking at a uh, replacement of some chairs and uh, tables. That would be a recurring or on a rotation. Um, and then over at the community center, some wash racks to help with uh, some arena um, events that we may end up having. Uh, Livestock show was one of them that we came across uh, the issue with this past year. And then over at the golf course, we're looking at um, some driving range enhancements and some improvements to that area. And then the tee box re relocation is just mainly due to the duck pond renovations that we have uh, that are currently taking place. Um, but I just want to give you a friendly reminder that everything is bulleted point on the right hand side that is all things that are proposed. It's not um, final by any means. So. Um, there's a lot of other things in the budget that um, just are smaller pieces, if you will, and, and just, you know, increasing cost of goods type things. So uh, these were the main pieces that I just wanted to point out to you, if you will. Has the audio and video um, <clears throat> equipment at the community center been, the issue's been resolved? Yes, the audio has. Uh, we're working on the visual right now. Yes. Yeah, full-blown audio. We're, we're good to go now. But no video to follow? There's the video the video's working. What we're doing is uh, we're adding another screen into the annex is what, what we're currently working on. So everything else should be up and running. Awesome. 
<clears throat> so I'll roll into golf course and community center. Um, just staying with the same approach, our golf course, uh, April statistics look like this. Um, very, very good month uh, that we had over at the golf course. Uh, you can see the the uh, the total for the for the month was 127,000 and some change. Um, in April, we had 203 rounds, uh, 200, uh, 527 practice rounds, and uh, 3,200 rounds uh, total. And then we have some upcoming events that I just wanted y'all to be aware of. And then this next slide is a uh, graph of the golf course and just wanted to give you an, an idea, maybe even just a, a better look at things. Uh, but on the left hand side, you can see the golf course rounds. Um, so what we're trying to do is uh, really compare from last month and then this current month and then also year to date, um, just to give you an idea. So um, 2021's rounds are in the light green and the current year's rounds are in that orangish color, if you will, or yellow. Um, <clears throat> but March, again, kind of stayed the same. Uh, April, um, you know, increase from last April. And if you look at the rounds year to date, we are down. Uh, I believe part of that can be contributed to uh, the October where we were closed down for about two weeks because of the flood. Um, and also, it just really depends on what the rounds look like. Could have had more practice rounds, and and that goes into that as well. So, um, you know, I don't I don't know if Rolando had a special or something on the practice rounds where we got more, but uh, nonetheless, we're about two thousand rounds shy where we where, where we were last year. Um, <clears throat> and then flipping over to the golf course revenues. Actually, let me backtrack. Even though that we're down <clears throat> two thousand rounds from year to date. Um, this year, we have 20 additional carts in our fleet versus last year. Last year, we got those carts in at the end of the year or towards the fall. And so we're really ramping up, you know, um, summertime is the time to, to go out and really golf. So <clears throat> we'll really see what that impact looks like of those 20 carts um, this summer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then same thing with the golf revenues. I uh, wanted to compare March and April together. So you'll see those side by side. Uh, and then the year to date as well. How many carts do y'all have in in action right now? We have seventy. Oh. Yes, ma'am. We uh, we went from fifty to seventy at the end of at the end of the fall last year. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, That's basically like a full. I'm just doing the math. Like we wouldn't need any more carts than that because. Seven, if you did 18 times four, if you figure there's a foursome on every hole that's like 72 carts, is that like pretty much standard for like a, the fleet should be around 70? I think it really just depends on your play that you have too. Um, and then what, you don't wanna bog down your course so you have a six hour round time either. So you have to be mindful of, of, of that as well. <laughs> um, I can tell you just from experience that at a previous course we had 80 carts, which is only 10 more and we were I mean, we had 12,000 more rounds a year, and so it, it definitely bogs down, too, um, just with time. Uh, part of that over at Riverside <clears throat> is we have private carts as well. And so that, that kind of fills in the gaps, too. So, I mean, we do have, you know, people that have their own personal carts that go and play with folks that have a rented cart. So um, I don't know if that helps answer the question or not. I'm just thinking, like, we needed more carts, but are we like full up on carts? Like more carts at this point oh, doesn't mean more golfers, right? Correct, so. correct, yeah. I, I think what we need to do is really just um, see how everything goes over the next year or two. We're, we're getting ready to move into um, GPS, um, and, and I have that listed on, on the project slide, but um, GPS is is moving forward, so we'll see how that you know works. And then obviously um, being so new with these additional 20 carts, seeing how that plays out in December too. Like GPS on the carts? To yes. track them on the course? Yes, yeah, GPS on the on the carts. Uh, so we have an item on the agenda uh, for city council this upcoming um, meeting uh, for GPS that will be installed on the golf carts. And um, yeah, it's a really cool thing. You can geofence um, the golf carts. And so you can geofence all 50, all 70 carts, I'm sorry, um, for car path only or for whatever you need. It helps with, um, Helps with a multitude of things. I mean, you could advertise on there. You can send out information on there. Um, you know, if the player wants to, you know, get out at, you know, at, at the fairway where their ball landed, they have an idea of, of the, the pin location and the yardage to it. Um, and so there's, there's multiple, it's a very robust system. But yes, ma'am, we are looking at adding GPS to the carts. 
be pretty. I was going to say the other thing about having a fleet of 70, it gives you some uh, squish room because you rotate those carts. So you're always rotating carts so that if anything needs maintenance and you're not at the mercy of all your carts being in use. So it's this whole practice around rotating those carts, which ones go out and come back in. And That's correct. Well, my thought is if, if that's a big area for us to increase with sports tourism, you know, is that going to help us bring in more? Do we need more carts? It sounds like, yeah, we have enough carts to host golf tournaments and all that kind of thing. We're not, right. you know. Yes, sir. I mean, and if a tournament comes in that's that's very large like that, I mean, we can always look at renting carts if needed um, for a short time. Um, but I would, I, I would venture to say that we should have adequate amount of carts for majority of the tournaments that we'd be hosting. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, community center. So uh, broke this down just a little bit more from last time. Um, so the city meetings and trainings. Uh, broke down with uh, versus the parks and recreation events because that is something that we're trying to identify or trying to utilize uh, community center a little bit more for uh, was recreation programs. So in total, we had 22 rentals. Uh, 11 of those 22 were non-city functions, which would be your quinceaneras or weddings, um, just general events. Uh, and then the other uh, 11 were, uh, five of them were the city meetings and trainings, and six of them were parks and recreation events, which could be uh, cornhole or uh, bingo or some of those kind of programs. And then on to Michelle's side. So the sports tourism. Um, this was part of a calendar that I showed you. It was really, really small last time, uh, but this is just a snippet of uh, what's what has been going on during the month of April and then what's to come during May and June. Uh, this is everything that we're currently aware of. Of course, Michelle and her efforts um, that she's, you know, um, her and her efforts to bring on more uh, tournaments aren't obviously going to be in here. A lot of the things that she's working on uh, haven't either been um, secured yet completely. Um, and in addition to that, we probably won't see it until 2023 and or maybe even beyond. So uh, again, everything that she's currently working on will be seen in the, the future years. But if there's any questions on these, be glad to answer them. What is Hot Rod Tour of Texas, and then how is Bikes, Trikes, and Power Wheels? What is that about? Is that, are these event names? Yeah, so on the left-hand side, so this is a, uh, this is a list that um, Michelle has going on with, um, with the CVB as well. So our CVB and Parks and Recreation, since there's um, a lot of the, a lot of the events that we have and the events that they uh, market and and, uh, and help with bring in tourism, we have a, a huge calendar. And so that's what this is. So some of this is going to be more of, you know, I don't want to say more of CVB, but this is going to be more of involvement in some areas with CVB um, versus sports tourism. Um, but nonetheless, yes, I, I believe uh, the left-hand side is the name of the event, the date, what kind of event that's going to be uh, taking place, and then the location of the event. So I know I didn't answer your question. I'm not exactly sure what bike strikes and power wheels is other than just an auto, an auto event. Um, Michelle, would you have any info on that one? Okay. Is that the weekend that all those Corvettes were here? Because there was the parking lot at the Hilton was full of Corvettes. I mean, well, which is what you want. So, <laughs> <laughs> even if we didn't have anything to do with it. Well, and that's part of this too, um, you know, Commissioner Repka is there's um, because there was you know CVB was working so uh, you know hand in hand with some of these events, and and now we have Michelle in here. Um, a lot of that is some crossover that's still happening. So there's, you know, they've been in communication with Joel since, you know, since the inception of their event, and now we have Michelle. And so there's going, going to be that that natural kind of gravitation towards Joel with those event coordinators um, until we're able to, you know, basically say, hey, Michelle's the person you need to reach out to, you know, start working with Michelle. Um, and so there is that that overlap still at the moment. Cool. 
Well, um, as Kimberly mentioned, I just wanted to touch on this because I thought it was really great. Um, you know, uh, Sports ETA was a really cool uh, conference that they were able to attend this past week. Um, but Michelle had mentioned, you know, uh, some kind of a pamphlet, if you will, that she was handing out to folks. And you can see on the top right hand side, there's the there's a pamphlet there that just a quick snapshot of it. Uh, but then in addition to that, she's also been working on the marketing piece and she put together a little PowerPoint about, um, you know, what do we need to do to basically step up our game a little bit? Um, she said, it's our game, you know, play Victoria. Uh, but there was a lot of great information in that PowerPoint for us um, as internal staff just to review. So again, a lot of the marketing pieces, how do we tell our story? How do we, how do we get, you know, uh, the spotlight put on Victoria in regards to sports tourism and some of these uh, event holders? And so um, that's, that's really what she's going to be continuing to work on for us and really just putting our name out there. So with that, uh, I'll roll into uh, a couple of slides on projects, and um, I think that'll be it. Uh, the Duck Pond, we did, uh, we were able to open up bids on the 28th of April. Um, we are currently working through the process of just reviewing the bids and discussing some of the information with our consultant. Um, we have a meeting set up this week to, to go over some of the items in some of the bids. Uh, with our consultant and our grant administrator. Um, so the hopes of that would be that we complete that within the next week or so um, and be able to, to move forward with a recommendation. And so uh, we did receive some bids and we're currently reviewing those. And so that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, the dog park, as, as we talked about a little bit earlier, um, the design development is, is pretty much complete. He has uh, started working on some construction documents. Uh, the goal for that is that we uh, are able to push out an RFP sometime in June uh, with the hopes that construction can start uh, very shortly after that. Um, four to six month completion is estimated for the construction time, so our, our goal and our hope is to have this completed by the end of December, first part of January, um, and then we'll have a dog park in, in Victoria or a Riverside Bark Dog Park in Victoria. Uh, the multi-purpose multi fields uh, that we have at the uh, soccer complex, we've, we've called it soccer complex, but quite honestly, there are multi-purpose fields because it's 12 acres of, of um, grass that we can manipulate however we want to. So um, they are multi-purpose fields, but uh, we do have, you may recall that we do have one area that is still yet to be completed um, from Fielder's Choice. Uh, we've been in contacts with them. Um, we're kind of at a point right now that um, we're, we're just trying to see if they're going to finish the job, and if not, then we're going to um, pull the plug and start working with another contractor to uh, finish the job. So uh, we have some we have some funds that are still left over from payment of Fielder's Choice that haven't been paid out yet, um, and so we do have enough funding to be able to to finish the project either with or without Fielder's Choice. Um, but so that's where we're at with them. Is another parking lot in the works for that? <coughs> Complex. We are we are working with an engineer to identify additional parking spaces. Yes, ma'am. Because the road is lined up across the street from the softball. I mean, from the soccer. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, there was an item that was taken to council. Um, I think it was two councils ago at this point um, from Ken Gill, our public works director, uh, for an ordinance that uh, prohibits parking along Red River Street in that in that ditch area, and so. Uh, we will be working to to put up additional signage and, um, and where are people that. supposed to park then because i was looking at it over the weekend and mm -hmm. across from the soccer fields was on both sides of the road full but it looked like their parking lot was kind of full too so i don't know where else they were to go yes ma'am so the the parking spot uh, the parking lot that we do have at riverside um is i think there's enough room in there for 100 cars the the, the new parking lot that we that we built um, so there's 100 spaces available. In addition to that, there's a uh, there's another parking lot that's right behind that community center slab or the convention center slab. It's more of a triangular piece at the intersection of Young and Red River um, that can be utilized as well. Um, and I I don't remember the estimate on that on that number, but there, from what we're what we were told and what we've been looking at and what our estimates are, we should have enough space within those two smaller within those two parking lot areas. Um, part of some of the part of the conversation that we're having with the capital improvements projects is identifying um, sidewalks um, within Riverside Park to be able to connect um, and, and make a better walking area. And so the idea is that, as of right now, if there's both of those 
parking lots are full, that you could always use the Riverside Stadium parking lot and walk down. But we know that that's an unsafe way of walking down Red River Street, so that's the connectivity concern. Um, some of the conversations that we're having with our engineer is, um, is identifying two parking spaces available on the opposite side of the soccer field area. So more on Bluff and Red River versus inside Riverside. You know, when I saw that it was packed, the parking lot and both sides <coughs> of the road on Red River, it looked like they were having games on all fields. So all the fields were full. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll definitely definitely take a look at that and see what see what we can do. Um, any other questions on the multi-purpose fields or the parking lots? Okay, uh, golf course restrooms. So we are continuing to work on uh, in improving those uh, the two on course restrooms that we have over at Riverside Park um, Riverside Golf Course. I'm sorry. Um, we're about 95% complete with one of those. Uh, we have a minor change order um, with one uh, after there was some uh, deterioration and some rot in the wood that was found. So uh, just a minor minor increase in cost, but nonetheless, there's a housekeeping item that we have to take to, to get council approval. So. Jason, are those the restrooms on the course itself as yes, opposed to the clubhouse? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's correct. Uh, the community center HVAC is, um, well, it was presented to council uh, this past Tuesday. Um, everything is moving forward with that project. So we'll start working with the contractor and building services to, to kind of finalize the timeline. Um, but the, the biggest thing was really getting the, uh, the chillers uh, on order because those were about 15 or 16 weeks out, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the project itself would take no more than, I think, three weeks. Uh, Riverside Stadium improvements, we're continuing to um, to improve those. We had a, a lot of the, the major renovations done to it. The locker rooms were upgraded. The restrooms were upgraded. Uh, there was also some minor projects that staff was going to, to go ahead and handle. Um, just, you know, some updates to electrical, some updates to the uh, ceiling fans. And so um, I, I think they're finalizing that in preparation for the 75th. And we also have a contractor that is uh, going to be doing some, some minor fence work for us and some minor painting. So um, still everything's still moving forward. Like, everything looks good. Um, I believe, I think Michelle might have mentioned a facility assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, we are working on a facility assessment um, for this upcoming budget year, and really just taking a look at all of the parked facilities that we have, the sports complex, the adult sports complex, or Riverside um, Golf Course, Community Center, um, and seeing you know what kind of improvements we may need there. Um, they, the consultant would end up giving us some cost estimates, <coughs> uh, some design information, some designs, um, concepts to look at as well, as well as a, a final written document or written report. In addition to that, um, we are working on the Main Street redevelopment with the with, uh, Main Street Division or Main Street Department uh, for De Leon Plaza. That was identified in the, uh, the master plan for downtown. Um, and then the Green Ribbon Project along Textide. Have you all, have you all seen the, all the trees and everything? It looks awesome, doesn't it? Oh, uh, by the loop? Yes, the yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma <laughs> um, so that was a project that we got looped into with environmental services. Um, they were about 95% complete with all the trees installed. Uh, there's some minor trees and some minor, I mean, some minor things with a few of the trees they're, they're, they're going to replace for us. But uh, overall, I think, I think it looks great. Uh, really good contractors to work with. So uh, hopefully they should be done by the end of this month, first part of next month. Jason, is that done through Victoria Beautiful or through... Parks, or just, um, that's a tech stocks project. So yes, ma'am. It was a tech stock. It was originally a tech stock project. Um, so they have uh, they have. It's called the Green Ribbon Project. It's for attainment. It has to do with air quality, right. um, and so a lot of it they they deal with in the Houston area. But anyway, long story short, we were able to get wrapped up into that into that conversation with them. Um, city was able to to put some funding towards the project to make it a, a bigger and better project, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Does that go through? I'm just curious. Did it go through your department sure. or Victoria Beautiful? Victoria Beautiful. It it goes through the environmental services, which environmental oversees services. the Keep Victoria Beautiful. Keep Victoria. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's it. All right. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank well, thanks very much, Jason. I have a question. If I sure. can have a question. Absolutely. Uh, regarding the status of the Pebble Beach parking lot and the streets uh -huh. um, in the park, I know you said you were trying to get the streets replaced in Riverside Park, like redone. 
opposed to just fixing Fox's Bend and Pebble, uh, the Pebble Beach parking lot or the Grover's Bend area. What's the status on that? Because Pebble Beach is still, you know, pretty bad as is Fox has been. We, the roadway. I know after the flooding, we had conversation because that was the main thing was with the flooding because afterwards there was some road deterioration, I think, on, on some sides, um, some like washouts. Um, and I know I had conversation with Public Works. I'm just going to have to follow up with that. Um, I'm not sure about the Pebble Beach, though. I know we were working on it at one point. <laughs> Sorry. Some new um, microphones. So it sticks really well. Um, so Pebble Beach, we have reopened it. Um, the amount of uh, crushed granite that it took to create that area is way more than what we have in the budget to be able to um, replace right now. So it is still drivable, and it is your. We are still able to park on it. So. Um, we do have it operating in that capacity right now. Um, I don't think we explored it for putting into the budget this year because the parking lot was still able to be used the way it is. So, what about the condition of the Fox's Bend uh, roadway? It's very holy and it is washed out in several places. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll have to touch base with Public Works and see where we're at and what we what we can do in this current year. Um, if there's not anything. I don't know if they have a, a, a plan for that. I know they have plans for roadways, and so I'm not sure if there's <laughs> you know, some of that park roadway is incorporated into some of that. Uh, so I'll touch base with Public Works and see you know kind of where that falls. Um, if it's not in that plan, I'll see if there's anything that we can do about adding some money to at least get some of those areas fixed within this upcoming budget. Yeah. Yeah, improving the street at Fox's Bend would be a great asset, too, because we just built an awesome disc golf course there. So when we have big tournaments and people coming from all over the state to play, it's kind of embarrassing to have, you know, a new course and then a very bad road situation. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'll, uh, I'll touch base with Public Works and see what we can do. Great. All right. Anyone have future agenda items? Brian, you had I had a, mentioned I'd been thing. approached by, uh, I'm also a member of the Young Professionals Organization, Victoria Young Professionals, about uh, what it would take to do a river cleanup. Um, okay. There was some interest in, you know, tubing and kayaking, you know, right along a Ashley's line, but uh, just with some of the debris, with the river being lower, some stumps, some trash on the edge, I didn't know if there had ever been... Uh, you know, a river cleanup day, something sanctioned. There was kind of questions on like what can and can't be removed as far as erosion. You know, does that fall under the Guadalupe, you know, river authority? Does that fall under the park commission since the land's in the park? But like just how to navigate that. So I um, wanted to see, you know, if there was potential for some partnership with the parks department, um, you know. And I've, I've probably had like three other organizations reach out wanting to do the same thing. So okay. We Real might want to have quick. some we joint forces big Ab river cleanup day. Absolutely. Um, I know KBB was looking at that. Christy. Um, we have a meeting with KBB tomorrow to talk about a river cleanup. Oh, awesome. Yeah. KBB. <laughs> oh, keep, keep Victoria, Victoria beautiful. beautiful. Keep Sorry, Victoria beautiful. Okay. Yeah. okay sir. <laughs> now, when y'all are talking about river cleanup, <clears throat> are you just talking about the river that um, faces the Riverside Park? I'm not sure. Because that's kind of the river, like the kayaking trail in Riverside Park just goes from our Rose Garden boat dock to the pump house and it ends, but the river is long. Yeah. So but I think that there's a lot of, you know, people that are interested in cleaning up the river. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think it has to be just inside Riverside Park, but I think that there's some want in the community for a bigger discussion around that. I don't think we need to solve the problem here, but I just wanted to bring it up that, you know, I've been approached by groups that are willing to offer free labor and boats and tools and all that it, stuff, sure. but they just, they need a little bit of direction on, you know, how they can go about it before they just go in there and start, you know, well, well, and I, probably some help of hauling out tree branches and where to put it all when they take it out. So that's kind of what I wanted to just figure out. Last week we did a cleanup with the Coastal Bend Paddlers before the prelims and we met up at the Nursery Bridge and GBRA. They provided trash bags and things like that. So it, it happens, I guess, frequently as well, like by different little groups, but we it would be nice if we could all get together. I mean, if I, I would like to go to that meeting or I have the information and I can help, you know, coordinate to the other people that are reaching out and maybe we can all work together and have a big river cleanup day. That'd be pretty cool. 
Absolutely. Um, Keep Victoria Beautiful is under the umbrella of Keep Texas Beautiful. And Keep Texas Beautiful, if you go to their website, they have uh, Texas Waterways Cleanup. And um, I think they, I don't remember when, I think it's towards the end of summer. Um, but nonetheless, I know in just in quick conversation with Christy, she wanted to do something, you know, prior to that anyway, um, or or at least, you know, something along those lines. So uh, we, we don't have to wait for, for Keep Texas Beautiful, but I just wanted to throw that out there is that Keep Texas Beautiful does have a lot of those those initiatives in place and kind of the times of the years of, of when they support some of those things. It'd be good to wait until after the marathon now, the Texas the Water Safari, Safari, because they don't want us to tamper with the things that get in the way. So, so do you think maybe like after your meet, like for next uh, commission meeting, y'all could bring back some information on what, you know, absolutely KV KVB, uh, what KVB <laughs> said, and then maybe we can, I think it'd be cool if the sure. Parks Commission maybe planned a river cleanup day this summer and, you know, advertised it out there, got, you know, people involved that want to help, you sure. know. T-shirts. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we yes. can definitely, after we have the meeting, we can send you some information just via email. And then, you know, for, for some lengthy discussion, we can place that on the agenda. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Brian, didn't you have something else on the Moody Street Bridge? Oh, no. I just went down there and checked oh, out okay. the, the boat ramp because I'd never seen it before. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> didn't know it existed until we had that conversation last commission meeting. Right. Yeah, and what's the status on that? Is it going to get dozed any time, or is there any relief coming to that area? Um, it just makes for an extra kayak ramp to yeah, an I exit. I, I definitely agree. I, I would. I'd have to follow up with you. I don't. I don't remember where we we're at with some of the conversations that we've had with that particular boat ramp, um, whether that was CIP or or what. But I'll, I'll let me follow up with you on that and see see where we're at. Is it a is it a part of the parks? Yes. System. It is. Yes, sir. Okay. But when I saw it on very that, nice like, area, actually. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. All right, anything else for agenda items or any future Make a agenda? motion to adjourn. Uh, without objection, we will adjourn. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank all of y'all. <laughs>